this is problem number three of the free response. Um, and it says, given the, the function f of x equals x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus 2x minus 3, um, part a says, use the long division to show that x squared plus 1 is a factor of f of x. So basically what they're saying is, let's divide, let's use long division to divide this f of x by this factor. And if the, the remainder is 0, then that means, or that is proving, that this factor is in fact uh, a factor of f of x. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put f of x under here and divide it by x squared plus 1. So we have x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus 2x minus 3. And so what we need to do is to think of what can I multiply to x squared, don't think about the plus one, just x squared, what can I multiply to that to get x to the fourth? So I need to multiply two more x's, x squared. So when I multiply these, the two and two add together to uh, form x to the fourth. So now let's multiply this to this to get x to the fourth, multiply this to the one to get x squared, and then we're going to subtract this whole thing. So let's switch the signs here, subtract this whole thing from that equation. So these guys are going to cancel. The x cubed uh, stays here because nothing has been subtracted from it. Uh, the minus 2x squared minus x squared forms a 3x squared and then let's just bring down the rest of what we have. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing to try to form this guy. So what do we need to multiply to x squared to get 2x cubed? So we definitely need a 2 and we also need one more x. So notice how you're not trying to multiply to find the negative of this. You, you just want to um, find the same value. Okay, so the sign of your multiplication should be the same uh, as the sign of the value that you're trying to find. And then, so we multiply this out to both of these factors to get 2x cubed plus 2x times 1 is just 2x. We do the same thing, and then we uh, subtract both of them to get this to cancel out. The negative 3x squared stays the same. Uh, 2x minus 2x will just cancel this out, and then the negative 3 will come down. Now, um, why do we need to multiply to x squared to get negative 3x squared? Just a negative 3. So then we bring down the negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and then we want to minus it. So when we minus it, we distribute the negative sign, and then we get these two to cancel out, these two to cancel out, and we get our remainder of 0. So that means um, this remainder is proof that x, plus, x squared plus 1 is a factor of f of x. And that is the answer to part A. That's just the proof to part A. So we're going to use the answer that we got to, uh, from part A to uh, do part B. Part B says, find all the zeros of the function f of x. the complex number system. So what does that mean? That means that we're finding real solutions as well as complex solutions. Real and also complex. So in previous classes you might have been taught um, and gotten used to eliminating any complex numbers you've gotten, but whenever they ask for uh, solutions in the complex uh, system, 
In the complex number system, uh, you want both real and complex. So to find the zeros, we need to factor this out as much as we can and make it uh, equal to f of x equals zero. So one hint that uh, we can use to factor this out was the, the answer for part a, which the part a is telling us we know x squared plus one is one of the factors. Now the rest of what we have here is actually, I erased it, but it's actually the, um, the number, so let's say you put f of x here in part a, and you divide it by x squared plus 1, the number that you got here is what's going to go here. So basically, this times this will equal f of x, which is what we, we have here. And that number was x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, so now we factored it a little bit. Maybe we could factor it a little more if uh, this is factorable. And if not, we could use the quadratic equation to solve for x's for here. So let's see if it's factorable. This times this gives me a negative 3, which I can separate into 3 and 1. And I can multiply the 1 by negative to form a positive 2. So if I add these two, I get a positive 2. If I multiply the 2, I get a negative 3. So then I'm going to rewrite this as x plus 3 here, and x minus 1 here. And then the x squared plus 1 that I got from before. So basically to get the zeros, the final thing to do is to set each one of these equal to 0. So let's set the first one equal to 0. We have x squared plus 1 equals to 0. We're going to subtract 1 from each side to get x squared equals negative 1. And now we're going to get the square root of both sides. Remember to write this as plus and minus whenever you take a square root. Uh, these will cancel to get give me x. And then I get plus and minus square root of negative 1, which is the definition of the complex number i. So this is one of the solutions is x equals plus and minus i. So that's uh, from this one here. The second solution is going to be when we said x plus 3 equal to 0. And if I subtract 3 from each side, I get x equals negative 3. And that's from this one. So I can start checking out the ones that I've done. And lastly, from x minus 1, equal to 0. If I add 1 to both sides, I get x equals to 1. So my solutions are, for my zeros, are x equals to 1, x equals negative 3, x equals plus and minus i.